Hey guys, so this is another instructional video. This time is for war. <laughs> I've been wanting to do a war instructional video for a very long time, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. So the things I'm gonna talk about here, uh, you guys as a, as a guild have to decide what how how is your style of play and how you would you like to actually play in war. Uh, so uh, yeah, I hope this tips uh, actually help you out here. So the first thing you have to know about war is the fields. If, if you don't know the fields, you're in big trouble. Uh, yeah, it's going to give you a lot of problems uh, and, and setting up teams, attacking, because uh, a lot of people forget that when you attack, you also get these buffs, these buffs from every single field here as well so you when you attack you you do need to take that into account probably the only one that doesn't give you anything as an attacker is f5 here but we're going to talk about that in a second so the first one is f1 f1 is reward for courage or just courage uh increases stats provided by weapons and runes by 50 percent for all heroes no hero can restore HP. So that's the main thing here. Nobody gains life here. So that could be bad or that could be good. Depending of uh, what what's your actual setup here. So uh, the main thing here is playing on defense. You really want to create shields and force the enemy to attack you and give you stats. So when you actually get the stats, you're not going to gain a lot of shields and you're most likely going to die. But that's the name of the game here. It's, it's all or nothing on F1 here. So um, when actually defending, you definitely have to make sure that your heroes have sh uh, shield weapons. If they don't have shield weapons, uh, you're going to have a lot of problems here for sure. On defense or uh, on the attack, whichever of the two is going to give you a lot of problems here. So for sure, if you're going to use a, a defense team on F1, you have to have shield weapons. And not only on, on defense, also on the attack, because that's the real life here. And if I'm not mistaken, Alias plus three weapon uh, still uh, hasn't been fixed and she still heals 35% um, life in here, of all things. So yeah. So that's another thing you might need to take into account. Though most people that have Alia plus three weapon, they usually move to uh, to F2. So no worries there. So heroes that you can actually use on F1 classic hero is um, let me see. Um, well, first of all, a lot of people do like to use Thor. Thor will give a lot of protection here for sure. That's the first one. The second one is Gara. Gara it has been a classic, classic hero uh, that's been put here. For some reason, I don't see a lot of Garas here. Gara Palmyra is also a hero that loves to be here, but with her shield weapon, uh, she loves to be here for sure. Um, too bad we're not getting a lot of uh, good examples here. But this one, this this could be a mistake of uh, putting Cathbad here. That's not a good idea. Cathbad, uh, I know he turns shrooms, but uh, he also heals and helps the team a lot. So that's a very important to note here. And I, hmm, well, I'm not going to talk about that <laughs> anymore. So anyhow, uh, the main thing you have to take into account is you're not going to heal. Don't put healers on F1. That's the number one rule no matter what you do over here on F1. And another very important thing that you have to take into account of F1 is Revival Heroes are king here. So by Revival Heroes, I mean Loki. Loki at plus 5 is disgusting here. Uh, and Mildred at plus 5, also disgusting. Every single hero that that dies and, and gains full life, it's absolutely disgusting. Disgusting in F1, for sure. I've I've received more than one messages of people like really really mad of F1 and uh, combination of um, of Loki and Mildred there. <laughs> it's really crazy stuff, guys. So yeah, if you decide to go with F1, uh, definitely bring in Loki or and or Mildred. That is, it is pretty annoying. So anyhow, now let's go to F2. F2 is 
Room Shield. Heroes will gain shield equal to 15% of their max HP for one turn after being hit by a skill. So this is usually the, the field that is used the most. If you're in a guild that doesn't really organize uh, your your teammates in, in the specific fields, the very first thing you're going to notice that everybody's going to run to F2 because this is the best one to actually uh, set up teams. Go, which Because whichever team you set up, they're going to get shields, they're going to get protected, and it's going to be harder for them to, to actually die here. So, very important field, uh, and usually you're going to see the biggest, the baddest, the most badass <laughs> of the entire guild on this field. Um, usually you're going to see them here. Usually Usually, not always, and we're going to talk about that in a second also. So uh, on Rune Shield, uh, definitely bring in your best heroes uh, with healers, usually. Uh, al always remember to put your dispellers on the left side. Uh, here I'm, I'm seeing uh, the opposite here, which I do not recommend. But remember that when you're setting up uh, defense teams, like I explained on my defense video, you always have to make sure to set up heroes uh, that you want to go off first on the left side. So usually you are going to see Alia plus 3 weapon on the left side. So she goes off, she uh, gives uh, mana to everybody, heals everybody, dispels everybody, and then everybody goes off. And it's, uh, yeah, it is pretty disgusting for sure. So anyhow, um, heroes that you can def definitely bring in here. Um, Luna is a very popular one to bring in here for sure. Because uh, uh, everybody's going to want to kill Luna and the rune shields are going to definitely protect her here. So that's going to be really nice there for sure. And uh, let's see, pretty much any team that you want to really survive here, you're definitely going to want to put on F2 in general. Uh, putting Thor is going to give even more protection uh, with, with the shields that are producing with rune shields. So very, very nice. Something that you do have to take into account is rune shield shields do not activate uh, Thor's, I'm sorry, um, Malfort's uh, ability to do damage. So do take that into account as well. Yeah. So that if, if you're thinking that that's going to be a good idea, no, it is it is not. Sorry. Uh, but with Malfour, you can just bring in his own weapon, Awakened, and that's going to produce a bunch of shield on its own. So no bro no worries. So anyhow, uh, recommendation for with heroes, pretty much any hero you you that is highly leveled, you can bring in in F2. However, as I mentioned a moment ago, the heroes that you really want to activate first, you have to put them on the left side. So, for example, here on this, t on the second team, let me show you here. On the second team, uh, I would have wanted to have Elmist here on the left side. So, Elmist goes off, he dispels, he gives mana to everybody here on, uh, everybody here on this team, on the second one. And uh, in this situation, uh, this player decided to put um, Alpha on the left side. So Elmas goes off. Alpha is going to get a uh, life. And she's not going to do anything for the turn because she already went. Remember, that's left to right that you activate. So Alpha is going to have to wait until the next turn to actually go off. So, yeah. Uh, that's not something you really want. Always put the hero you want to activate on the left side for sure. Alright, uh, so Room Shield is pretty straightforward. Any hero you want at all, in general. Uh, yeah, that that's going to be very useful. And on the attack, um, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Everybody goes off. Hmm. If you're going to put um, multi-damage, uh, your, your hardest hitter, uh, do try to put it maybe in the middle, maybe on the third um, side here on defense. Let me see who... Sure, why not? On um, the th uh, second or third side, because every single time these guys go off, they're going to get a stack of shields over and over. So if you leave your hardest hitter on the la on, on the last one, you may, it's it's a big may, you may have problems because they're going to have a bunch of shield on, on them. 
Uh, but if you if you feel that uh, that's not going to be a problem, sure, you can put your your hardest hitter on the right side, the the outer right side there. All right. So now we're going to talk about F3. F3 is one of the most interesting ones, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Affinity of Nature increases the duration of buffs and debuffs by two turns for all heroes. So this is a, this field is going to require you to choose specific heroes that at that uh, thrive uh, with um, having buffs and giving debuffs in general. In the past, I do remember uh, a lot of players would use like uh, Is um, Isadora, uh, Cathbad here in in connection because she would go off. Everybody would get uh, the buff all over, and uh, it would be forever. It would be forever. So it would if you didn't have a dispel lean hero, it's game over. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that that's gonna be a real problem uh, if you don't have the spellers. So Isadora obviously is a very good choice here. Uh, however, lately I've been seeing a lot of players using Luna here. Luna plus five in in uh, this field is pretty disgusting. Pretty disgusting. Because um, because the, the thing is that uh, remember that Luna at plus five uh, will revive the hero and also give uh, that. Uh, buff uh, for one turn of 100% uh, dodge uh, but uh, that specifically in this field is gonna turn instead of for one turn it's gonna be for three turns <laughs> so yeah that that's gonna be fun huh <laughs> three turns with that so there are ways to to play around that but it is pretty powerful if you don't know how to and I've seen a lot of players fail because of that uh, very very powerful stuff so in general, uh, any hero that creates buffs or gives debuffs uh, is gonna thrive here for sure. So for example, if if you have like um, uh, let's see, like Damon or Malfort that uh, does doesn't uh, receive uh, two turns of stacks, here they're gonna receive the whole three turns. For example, if if it's gonna be three turns, so that's something that you have to take into account for sure. All right. So now we're. Um, by the way, uh, this one is F3, uh, nature for the buffs here. So now for F4, this one is pretty spicy. This one is pretty fun for sure. So I'm gonna explain a, a few things here. So Call of the Wild and all heroes increases attack by one percent for every one percent of their life loss up to one hundred percent. So this field has been underestimated in the past, not anymore, because a lot of guilds have um, really um, discovered a, a lot of powers here for sure. So the main hero you have to uh, t take into account here is Thor. Thor at plus one with his, uh, with, um, let's see, not this weapon. Hmm. Um, um, with Karma's weapon or Lupita's weapon is disgusting. But uh, a lot of people prefer to use uh, Karma's weapon here because Karma's weapon is actually going to give you a bunch of... Uh, Okay, <laughs> a bunch of um, a t uh, crit chance right off the bat, and pretty much Thor is gonna revive. He's gonna be there for three turns, and when he goes off, he murders everyone. Everyone he murders. So yeah, that is pretty crazy, really, really crazy stuff, that guys. And for some reason, this these guys have they do use Thor, but they don't. No, they're not using the weapon. That's it's a real shame, because uh, this field is incredibly powerful. Some of the most powerful guilds in the game do use this field. Here we go uh, with uh, Lupita's weapon, with Karma's weapon, and they absolutely destroy the enemy with this. Then you're gonna if if a guild actually has uh, weapons like these. Uh, you're going to see a lot of them that are like Thora at w one life and then he goes off and he murders everybody over and over and over. 
So that is pretty, pretty crazy stuff, guys. So other heroes that you can actually use here are Loki. Loki here is disgusting. Uh, uh, yeah, for some reason he didn't put weapons. So Loki here is disgusting. Uh, completely disgusting here. Because uh, uh, he's going to revive a, a few times, so... He's, there's going to be moments in which he's, his life is going to be really low. And when he goes off, he's going to do a bunch of damage. Very, very powerful stuff. And some people actually like to use Luna here. Because Luna is going to... Uh, Luna plus 5 is going to revive everybody here. And with one life, whoever that is, they're going to do disgusting damage. I've seen Percy doing pretty decent damage when he's really low in life. And so, yeah. Very, very fun uh, a field to actually play in uh, on F4 here. Very, very cool stuff. So, anyhow, now we're going to you to talk about the most underestimated field of all, which is F5. Fog of War. The battlefield is covered by fog. Spot 1 and Spot 3 heroes on of the defense team will hide in the fog and be invisible. The fog will dissipate when Dragoneers enter the, the battle, and the full defense team will be unveiled. So, uh, it is underestimated because you can just uh, come in here and check the list uh, over here of the different players uh, that, that are already attacked here, and you can actually see uh, what heroes that are hidden. So, this is the part of the guild that, that may want to uh, help out if you have a problem player here. Like on your chat, you're going to say, okay, this guy has this hero and this hero hidden. And uh, things like that. So you have to work as a team to take out whoever is the problem here, uh, problem player here. So who is, who are you gonna hide here? Pretty much any hero that you want to, you want um, hmm, any hero that the enemy would love to kill or a very problem hero uh, here for sure. Like for example, I would have hidden Isadora for sure. So if he's hiding two other um, heroes here, they have to be more problematic than Isadora. So that's going to be fun to see, actually. <laughs> so yeah, uh, any problem heroes, you, if you're setting up defense here, any problem heroes you have to hide. Um, Alia here. Okay, Alia is only the weapon with plus zero. Okay. So if it were Alia, it would have been the plus three weapon for sure to hide for here for sure. Very, very cool. So anyhow, uh, between all the fields, probably F1 and F5 are going to be the least used because a lot of players are not going to have uh, the flexibility to create uh, teams um, as much as other fields on F1. So probably F1 and F5 are going to be the least used. And uh, F2 and F4 here are going to be the most used in war for sure. So we're going to talk about now... Um, in war how to actually attack in different uh, uh, enemies here so let me give uh, some examples here the first thing you have to know before attacking is is the team that I'm actually gonna fight is it too strong for me uh, will it be problematic for me so uh, depending of um, your assignments in in war uh, in in your guild because um, at least with us uh, we assign people to actually put debuffs on teams so to make sure that the team is not going to be too problematic uh, stacks are these by the way this this one has five this one has two this one has three so we do put assign people to put stacks uh, there to help us out usually there are people that are not very high level um, in their teams and they're probably the debuffing is pretty much the 100% thing the best thing that they can actually do to help us take out these monsters of teams here so uh, that's the first thing you have to take into account uh, is it too strong for me um, will I be able to uh, a good a good way to actually know is if the problem heroes on the team are going to wipe you out right there on the spot uh, it's not so much about power, it's more about that. So, uh, for example, here, with these teams, uh, when you're fighting against Luna with an Idrit team over here, you definitely need to bring in Damage Share. 
uh, for sure. If you don't have damage share, it's going to be a big problem. If Luna is alone, yeah, you don't need damage share. But with either team, with, uh, for example, uh, Percy and Idritha here, you definitely need damage share. For sure. Or if you're, you're going to get murdered. So, yeah, that's the first thing. Uh, you, that you have to definitely do. I already talked about Luna. Uh, Luna again. There's a lot of Lunas here, by the way. So, if you're fighting a team like this, probably Thor is going to be your most problem hero. Because Thor is going to give shields. Thor is going to uh, do a bunch of damage. So, probably a team that can take out Thor as soon as possible. It's probably the best option here, in my opinion. However, if you're playing green, probably... Elmus is the best hero that you have to take out as soon as possible because once Elmus is dead, you can bring in your team, green team, with Isadora, with Isadora, and uh, take out the rest of this team without any problem. So that's the, the mindset you have to actually do. Um, if you're bringing in a specific team, if you see a problem hero, uh, will I be able to take them out? Will I be able to survive? That's important. That's why it's so important to use uh, shield weapons on defense and on the attack uh, to survive uh, the fight. Here on this team, uh, the pff, obviously the most problem hero, hero here is going to be Alia. Will I be able to kill her? Because she's definitely going to be plus 5 here. She's going to be immune to debuffs. She's going to give mana and life to everyone in the team. And it's going to be a point that you have to kill her. If not, it's going to be a nightmare. So she, is, she has to go down as soon as possible. And uh, other problem heroes here, it's probably definitely going to be Lorenzo because with his damage share. So probably you're going to want to tr bring in single target uh, uh, dispellers to take out Alia and uh, maybe other heroes. Um, you may want to try to kill Thor, but he's going to revive and then Alia is going to revive, uh, pretty much bring in a bunch of uh, heals. So pretty much... It's, it's X reviving in a way because uh, he dies she comes in and brings him to full life again and if you're fought against Thor you'll know that he's not so easily to take out so definitely Alia is going to be the hero that you want to take out here as soon as possible with any means necessary as soon as possible for sure so uh, let's see another sample here Another way to look at uh, how to attack a, a, a defense team is uh, which hero am I able to kill fastest? So here definitely, um, the hero that I can definitely kill fast it, fastest is uh, Leticia. Leticia here is definitely going to be be the one that, that dies fastest. So especially that, that since she she got slapped in with the whip so she's not gonna go off uh, and uh, nobody's really protecting here except for Mildred here with the targets but once this for, but once this runs out you can just straight up murder <laughs> Leticia here and once Leticia dies uh, even if you lose the fight uh, th this entire team will not have any uh, any energy weapon so that's a very important thing to note as well when you're attacking you if you can you if if you're not able to kill the whole team make sure to kill the energy weapon holder because once the energy weapon holder is down yeah you're 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 done with them pretty much because they're gonna have problems actually uh, reviving there um, actually surviving the next attacks and another thing that you do have to take into account with these high level fights is most of them will have um, uh, artifacts. So every single time you attack, you have to check the artifacts here. Do they have uh, the frozen? Do they have uh, the egg? The egg is going to counter a uh, stone generation for purple, and purple is the best attack team for war for sure, and uh, and hasn't really changed in a while. Actually, it has become even more powerful lately. So, always check artifacts before attacking, or you will regret it, because, uh, yeah. Especially if they have egg and you're attacking purple, it's, it's going to be sad. And uh, always remember that if you're attacking a team that has Mildred, even Mildred plus one is going to be a 
big, huge problem. Uh, so the way that you counter Mildred is the few ways that are already uh, explained in past videos. But uh, the main one is that you bring a cleanser hero like um, like Valerie, uh, Alia. Uh, Green has a bunch of, of uh, cleansers like Miranda. Um, Fabula is a good dispeller too. Uh, to actually, uh, this uh, to actually cleanse. Sorry, it's cleansing. Cleanse uh, the damage share uh, for Mildred. So once you cleanse that, you won't be having to transfer 60% of your uh, attack given to Mildred. So that's super important to remember. If you don't bring your cleanser with Mildred, you will regret it because heroes will start dying. And yeah, that's gonna be really sad. So yeah, for sure. All right, and uh, final tips uh, for attacking in war. Hmm. Well, not so much attacking. Uh, I think the the most important thing you have to remember in war is what is your role in rule in war? Because uh, you could be a dispeller. You could be a mid range player. Mid range players are usually the ones that. There are like, uh, let's see, let me give you an example. Mid-range player are like uh, 140, 150, 170, 130. Those players are the ones that take out uh, the, the mid-range, like 135 and things like that. And uh, if, you're, if you're like the whale killer, I I'm a whale killer, for example, for sure. Uh, for example, my role is is to take out these three guys and uh, uh, so you can understand my perspective um, I'm definitely going to need to to use uh, damage share teams so I will want to use my purple team with Valerie or or and because it's two here uh, I am going to want to use um, my green team uh, with Isadora for sure so I definitely want to, for example, hmm, attack green team with Isadora here. Cause why? Cause there's not going to be a dispeller uh, with Elmis. Cause Elmis is going to have, get cause problems with green, and uh, usually you're going to want him to die first. However, since I'm lucky enough that I don't have uh, that problem here, then um, I'm definitely going to uh, do it like that. Uh, let's uh, green team here with Isadora and then purple team here with Valerie for damage here and then the third team is going to be a problem because this team has the combo this combo is um, pretty much uh, Alia Lorenzo and Mildred so that's the problem combo and yeah uh, I'm going to have fun with this one for sure <laughs> So, uh, whale killer is me. Usually, I'm going to make sure that they have a, that call help, uh, call help from other people to help me out to uh, put uh, stacks here on these teams to make sure that I can take them out as as uh, with least attacks as possible. Because I'm going to use my my shots for the next reset and the other reset, and uh, if I fail, it's going to be a big problem for sure uh, for the guild in general. So that's my role. So, yeah. <clears throat> if usually we as a guild uh, make a list of um, and, or uh, just assign people to be the spellers. I'm sorry, uh, debuffers. And debuffing, again, is this. This guy has five. So we assign them to do that. Uh, to put debuffs on the strongest enemies uh, on the field. So we have a group of people that are dedicated to that. Usually they're going to do three uh, debuffs and then the other three attacks they're going to uh, go ahead and attack whoever they want there. However, they can do like judgment calls and uh, they can decide to put all, all the six of their actual uh, attacks as debuffs if, if, if that is really needed in that situation. So yeah, uh, these are in general some uh, um, pretty much um, yeah. That's pretty much the the things that I wanted to talk about war. If you have any more questions, if you have any more uh, concerns in war, uh, please leave it in the comments. I'll more than gladly answer all your questions here. All right, thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a great day. Bye bye.